What is up amigos? Today we're talking about why cars naturally produce positive lift. So cars are quite aerodynamic, especially over the last 30 years or so, they've become very aerodynamic, the drag has dropped a lot. But despite that, they still pretty much all share one major flaw, which is they produce lift. Now, why is this bad? So at low speeds, it doesn't really make much of a difference. So for example, on your regular drive throughout the day, going to work, whatever, you're not going to be going to speeds so high that you'll notice much of a difference. But once you go onto the highways and faster, if you start going faster, so like 100 miles per hour or more, you start to notice that the lift of the car makes it quite unstable. So you might even start seeing that it drifts fairly uncontrollably and like sort of floats around, stuff like that. The reason why is because we have the weight of the vehicle coming down. But if the lift of the vehicle is greater or equal to the weight, then obviously it will start to lift off the ground. And that is when we start to lose like complete uh, control. But the more the lift is, the less traction we have on the wheels because the wheels are reliant on friction and friction is reliant on the force down on them and the friction coefficient. So having a positive lift results in the car being unstable at higher velocities. So why do cars naturally produce positive lift? Well, it really comes down to the people. So cars are there primarily to transport people around. So you have a person here driving along and you need to house these people somewhere. So the way that we do it is we have them sitting down. So the bottom half is facing the ground and the top half is facing the sky, which is normal for us. As such, we need to have the roof going around the people so that we can accommodate them. So we have in reality, mainly a fairly flat body and then a fairly curved top. So this effectively resembles a wing. And what happens is the flow comes here and it will accelerate a little bit underneath, but it will accelerate a lot more over the top. And as such, the pressure will drop a lot here, as opposed to here where the pressure won't drop nearly as much. So we get a pressure difference in, in favor of lift. So we have low pressure on top, high pressure underneath, we get lift being produced. So to get around that, we can put on spoilers, for example. So we put on the back here wings or whatever, and ideally this forces the car down more. So we kick the flow up and produce a bit of downforce. But regardless of which car you have, pretty much all regular factory cars have positive lift, unless they have some really wacky um, aerodynamics associated with it to overcome that. So it doesn't matter whether you have a sedan or a wagon or a fastback, they will naturally have positive lift. So in general, the average car will have a lift coefficient around about 0.3 to about 1.0. That's a really bad situation. And the further back in time you go, the more they actually tended towards quite high lift coefficients. Like if you go to 1930s, 40s, 50s, where the cars were very elegant, but also very curved at the top, they looked pretty much just like wings and they had a very high lift coefficient. Now we're getting them down quite low. And the way to do that is often with the spoiler and with the diffuser. So if we kick the diffuser up, so we shamp this bit off, the flow comes up and kicks up and we can produce a bit more downforce. That also results in a lot more force being put on the rear wheels. And if you're not careful, you get a, um, a greater shift, like a stability in the rear wheels and that creates a instability in the car. So it is a quite um, delicate procedure here. Now in terms of like supercars, hypercars and more race cars, the lift coefficient is actually usually negative and it actually goes to about, in some cases, down to minus three or even lower. So that means that we're getting a lot of downforce, which means that there's a lot of friction on these wheels and that results in you can go around corners faster, you can, you're can you not going to lose uh, stability at higher speeds. So that is why cars naturally produce lift. And the only way around this is really to either make the car a complete block or somehow make it negatively cambered so the bottom here is tapered off so we get a inverse wing kind of situation happening. Alternatively, you can always put the person so they're traveling head first and somehow have a window here. And then you can sort of cut off this bit here. And then you can have potentially a negative lift car quite easily, but this wouldn't be that safe or that comfortable, I guess. So how we have it these days is really the most ergonomic way. And that's what we get positive lift usually. So that's the end of this video. If you'd like to make sure to click the like button and the subscribe button and I'll see you soon. Peace amigos.